students in the elementary building. A Go Blue trait was we focused on last month was Grit, and students brought in over 150 Go Blue cards and got to sign the Wall of Fame. Grit means sticking to it and not giving up. We had a Go Blue assembly in the auditorium, and Mr. Van Epps had a balloon of shaving cream popped over his head. He showed Grit by trying to sing the Go Blue song, but he needs a little more practice. <laughs> Throughout the past month, all students have been participating in the Principal Grit Challenge. Each day, Mr. Van Epps gives gave students a challenge, either physical, academic, or character dares. In As a class, we would set goals and work together to achieve those goals together. As a school, we we set a goal to reach 1,000 grit going grit cold coat. By the end of the month, and, and with Mr. Van Epps' help at the assembly, we achieved, achieved that goal. Our fourth graders participated in a project with Ms. Burks where they used Makey Makeys to organize information and design an interactive poster display. They recorded their voices and every time you pushed a button, it would speak to that part of the poster. It was very neat. This week, our third grade orchestra students and our fourth grade band students will have their beginner band concert. This will be on Thursday, February 9th at 7 o'clock. The kids have worked hard and are showing a lot of grit as they prepare for the, their first concert. We, we are also excited about the 100th day of school, which, we will, which will take place on February 13th next week. We are also participating in a global day of play that will take place on February 17th. This month, we will be focusing on the global trait excellence and we'll be talking about what it means to strive for accuracy and think about our thinking. We will talk about how showcasing excellence is not perfection, but rising to the expectations that are set out for us. This month, we also have a new set of students attending book club. We are looking ahead to students attending STEAM Jam. And we have our second student chosen as the deputy assistant for Officer Hopper. Quest will also take place on February 11th. We are so grateful for all of these experiences and the staff that give up their time to support our students. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Go Blue Way. So again, lots of busy things happening in the elementary. Great. Thank you so much for putting that together. They do a great job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Day after school, and Jay Jess made Valentine's Day cards from Morgan Estates. We are planning on working with Miss McIntyre and volunteering at the blood drive, and more details will be given in March. 
Mrs. Harvey is hosting another lunch and learn on Tuesday, February 14th with Rachel Merrick, a local pro pro probation officer. Students will learn about what a probation officer does and how to become one. Middle School High School Ski Club has had five trips so far. The weather has been better the last two weeks for them. They have arranged, they have averaged 44 skiers and snowboarders the last two weeks. Their last trip for the year will be Thursday, February 9th. Thank you for supporting this club by providing transportation for drivers and chaperones. Art show season is beginning. On January 4th, Genesee art students were recognized in Rochester Institute of Technology's annual Start Here art show. These students were 12th grader Aiden Plazo, 10th grader Harper Antonucci, 12th grader Jake Scoble, and 12th grader Megan Bailey. Harper, Jake, and Megan received awards from the School of Art and were awarded at a formal ceremony. In addition, senior AP artist Samantha McDonald and Miss Beth Adams will have paintings on display in a special teacher-student art show at Nazareth College. An opening reception will be this Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. This Friday is the Kinder Senior Story Collaboration Project. All English 12 students will be paired with kindergartners. Seniors are working on writing a children's story and the characters will illustrate the main character. This past weekend was All County 2 in Warsaw. We had three GCS representatives for the Junior High Band, Juliet West playing the trumpet, Simon Aguilar playing alto saxophone, and Jamie Ferreira playing B flat clarinet, and two GCS representatives for the Senior High Chorus, Anna Ferreira, Ferreira as an alto, and myself, Gianna Cucciera, as a tenor. All County 3 will be March 3rd and 4th in New York, and more details will come after it has occurred. And for the show, patron emails for those who play that went wrong went out, and rehearsals are going great. Any questions? Great job. Great job. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're we'll at the presentations. Mr. Comble. Oh, sure. Hello. Uh, I'm not used to it. Don't think it's the wrong way. It's being fun. Uh, some big people. <laughs> <laughs> family. Yeah. Right. So I'm I'm here to talk about our research physics trip this spring. Before I begin, though, I want to thank you all for permitting uh, foreign exchange students to be part of the district throughout the years. I want to especially thank you for supporting our Ukrainian exchange student by allowing him to stay an additional year in the school district. Doing so is truly honorable and reflective of some of the best virtues humanity has to offer. The present is very much tomorrow's history. I'm proud that to be a part of a district that is able and willing to recognize this and to be on the side of history that helps others in dire need. I have always considered our district to be a sort of microcosm of the world stage because we are so small and relatively homogenous. If we cannot effectively work together to improve our own community through education, then I believe the rest of the world has no chance whatsoever. Therefore, I maintain that we owe it to ourselves to do the best that we can for not our own sake, but for all of humanity. Our district support of Nick is just one of many ways that our beloved school promotes good values for our students, their respective families, and their friends. Another much smaller and simpler way that you can help our students is by approving our annual overnight Regents physics trip in June. Uh, it has been on hiatus for the last three years um, because of COVID, and then last year we had this terrible uh, windstorm that was in my backyard. <laughs> Um, but ultimately, I don't have much prepared for that. It's just I've got 20 students of regions physics. It's a little bit smaller class this year than years past. I've had many of your children that have gone on my trip in the past. Um, we use it for a combination of review, uh, strictly for the regions. It's going to be a few days after we spend the night. Um, the location is at Finger Lakes Community College. They have a remote campus down uh, on Honeyway Lake. And there are professionals that are there that are on staff that run through some biodiversity sustainability exercises. And then we interweave that with um, the region's review, team building activities, night hikes, s'mores. Um, Ms. Shields has joined me in the past, and it's, it's ultimately a lot of fun. And I know that in the past, um, it's always went off without a hitch. Um, there was one year that we had another storm. We had it close a little bit early. I think Josh was in that, that one. But... Ultimately, it's a safe spot. Um, and I know that in the past, people would say, what are the reasons not to go? But I would encourage you to look for the reasons to let it happen. So does anybody have any questions about that trip? Sounds like a pretty sure. Like, no, okay. Yeah, I'll make sure to 
Let me just share some photos and yeah. you know, yeah. corral one of the students in the later on after the event in the summertime to come back with some sort of report for you all. That'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. So, the is that on this? Yeah. Within his section, so 301. Oh, yeah. Not a separate. No, it's okay. 301. So, I'll entertain a motion for 3.01 uh, to approve the uh, physics retreat. June 15th and 16th, 2023. Second. Uh, discussion? No? Everybody good? All right. Good. All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, administrative uh, updates. Uh, let's get back next. Another home run for the student report. I know. They, they took all the the fire from here, so uh, <laughs> all the boring stuff. Like uh, the, the shading so that must have been good. Yeah, so Mr. Miller, our school psych, really interrupts every single assembly that we have and works with the kids to uh, get me messy in some way. So it's like so we, we haven't have, planned out, right? We didn't have a picture of that. We didn't. Uh, the teacher sent it to me, and I will use that. Oh, yeah, that's around. But <laughs> they know better. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. Uh, the last time I was up here, just giving an update for the building, I had introduced you to this little image here that we are using to anchor into all of our conversations at the, the teacher level, the staff level at the elementary building. And each of these pieces connects rather nicely to our strategic plan that we're looking at uh, getting in, in play and in action here soon. So I just wanted to update you on kind of some things we're doing across the building that connect here and uh, you will hear about in the next several months uh, that are also applicable to that strategic planning piece. Sure. So the first thing that we've continued working on building wide is organizing and uh, drafting up a mission statement for a building. We recognize that we all come in with many different perspectives and it's important that we recognize the values that we bring to the building and then looking across the board, what values are most important to us to move our building forward. So we started the year looking at drafting up a commitment to colleagues where we took our gold blue crates and unpacked each of them and said, what does that look like for us as staff members so that we ensure that we are holding each other accountable in each of the different avenues that we participate in each and every day. We then created a commitment to students, same idea, our gold blue traits, what does grit look like when working with students? What does optimism look like when working with students? And we've used those when we have meetings across grade levels and across the building to ensure that each decision that we're making connects back to students and their needs. We then looked at profiles of our learner where we drew some sick figure drawings about our uh, of our students and what they're bringing in, what they're thinking about, what they're seeing, the luggage that they carry with them each day, what's at their core. And from there, we said, well, because of all of this luggage, some people call it baggage, we call it luggage, because it looks a little fancier. Uh, because of that luggage, what opportunities do we have? It may look like uh, these kids are, some students are coming in with, with a lot of extra stressors. How do we take advantage of that and create a system and environment for them? Our next step is to talk about what do we do, why do we do it, and how do we do it? And that will lead to our overall mission statement for our building that we can anchor into as we move forward beyond this school year. Then looking more specifically at this framework, uh, we have a group of teachers that has uh, is giving up a lot of time to look at learning progressions. So we're uh, at our last superintendent's conference day, we talked about curriculum in general, and we have a group of staff, I said, maybe we can have 10, but we had 12 sign up who are giving up an hour every, every other week to build a ladder of skills from kindergarten to fifth grade that a fifth grader would need to accomplish to be successful as they transition out of our building. So very granular skills. I explained it as kind of like the Candyland board to get to Queen Frostine at the end. You need to hit all of these different pieces and sometimes you flip over that card and it's the peppermint guy and you go all the way back. So we, we intend to build this ladder of skills where we can take all of our kids and peg them on this board and say, this kiddo's here they need to make all of these jumps to be successful as they transition out of this building. This heavy work that will take us through the end of the year, but 
I applaud these teachers for taking this on because they recognize that it will help as we approach the curriculum development cycle. That one fits beautifully into the curriculum and assessment piece. Old child teaching, our building planning team, which is made up of uh, some teachers and a couple of parents and then a student as well, uh, looked across the needs of the building. And we had several topics come up, but this team has decided that our focus points for this school year will be looking at social emotional learning, old child teaching, as well as tier one behavior management strategies. One thing that they don't do a great job teaching you to do when you go to teacher college is look at tier one behavior management strategies. How do we ensure that every kid is getting equal access to some of the most basic fundamental social emotional skills? And then how do we consistently build a, a trajectory of learning for kids as they go through the elementary levels? So New York State came out with benchmarks, uh, late teens of the 2000s, 2017, 2018. And they're not standards specifically, they're just benchmarks that they encourage districts to look at. Well, then in 2022, this past November, they said, actually, we're going to remind you that these came out. I feel personally that they will become a standard eventually. So to be ahead of the game and then looking at our current state of the union, it's important that we begin to unpack those. They are not specific to each grade level. They just have grade level bands. So our building planning team is starting to unpack those and create expectations for each of our elementary grade levels to say, by the end of first grade, every student should be able to ID feelings and recognize feelings in others. We can then begin assessing students so that when they leave first grade, we will know which students are not able to do that and then get them into some tiered intervention systems, much like we do for academics. Uh, the other side of that is looking at how do we teach all kids basic social emotional learning skills and, and well-being and uh, working with some of the panorama survey data that our third through fifth grade students had taken recently, which Mrs. Miller will maybe unpacking in the future here. Uh, but we're able to say, here's where our needs lie, relationships, culture, community. Um, and, and then from there, our building plan team is looking at multiple resources that may be able to, uh, we may be able to access to help create a tier one system for social emotional learning. Um, the last piece is high leverage instructional practices, and I don't really have an update on that. I just want to highlight uh, the dedication of our teachers for that piece. Um, the pandemic may feel over, uh, but all of the repercussions for the pandemic just continue to increase. And the staff uh, here at Geneseo is, is second to none. They remain professional, congenial, collegial, and just as importantly, they're eager. They're eager to keep learning. To keep connecting with each other. Uh, and I just wanted to point them out for, for high le leverage instructional practices because all, all it takes is a simple question and you see them like coming together to try to try to solve some sort of problem. And it doesn't need to be a problem, but for them they say, well, you ask a question, we want to come up with the best answer. So I just wanted to applaud them uh, for all of their hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I did put um, Gary on the agenda. We do have a project manager and just wanted to take an opportunity to have Gary introduce him. So Brock, hi, sorry. Brock is for this time, but he's practicing social distancing, he's not told. Uh, <laughs> don't go near me. <laughs> so he's standing over there respectfully. This is Brock on the back. He's an entire new project manager. He's been with us for a month now. There was a lot of problems in place. Working so hard, we got we got a cold. Yeah, Minnie brought it over. Said so. And I'd just like to remind you that Brock's first morning was December twenty seventh, <laughs> when the coordinator was um, malfunctioning and the pool pump was just shooting water out of the pump onto the floor at a rapid pace, and he was just like. I don't even know what they're called, but where are those big vacuums that suck up all the water? I know what I'm doing. If you could just show me one, and he was not his problem. It was it was a it was a school issue, um, but he absolutely jumped right in. And even though we had significant damage, uh, you did think saved part of the floor that didn't get damaged. So thank you for your reference. Literally jumped in. Right? Literally, <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That was his pet. Yeah, just fire. <laughs> literally. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, construction is continuing. Uh, uh, 
anybody had enough to go back. I so, do. Fall because the steel is up, there's still some steel to go. There we have something to do the stairs. So there's a few more sticks of red iron on the ground that will have to be put up. So, but they're doing detail work. And I think the last time I was here, uh, the detail work is going to take six weeks. So we're still anticipating that to wrap up by the end of this month. So the plumbers out there working, but out there for a couple of weeks, putting in the underground beneath. So there will be a concrete slab first floor, but we have plumbing to put in and electric. So the plumber is going first. So they're running all their uh, lines right now underground and in advance of the slab that will go down and they come in um, later this winter, early spring. And then when they're done, then the electrician will follow. And so they will run their conduit underground and they need to eventually become the slab. So that's, and then EPC, wow, I, I, you hit it. Uh, and he said, who knew we had white walls? Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 let there be light. Wow. Day and night difference, isn't there? Oh, so huge. they are uh, plugging and chugging through. They're doing a really good job. They're here every night and making it happen. And it's ultra obvious. Yeah. It, it's amazing what, what, what the transformation is with the new lighting. Otherwise, all is good. We're on schedule and things are progressing. Um, don't forget, we have an auditorium project to do too. You know that that's coming up in June. That doesn't start until after school is out. So we have that coming as well. So that'll be the summer's work space tour. Any questions? Any questions? No labor shortages, no. Yes, of course, there's labor shortages. We hear every day. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, across the board. Anything everything. that affects the project, I guess. Um, yes and no. Yeah, I mean, we deal with what. We deal with the cards were dealt. I think I said that tonight. Um, they, uh, yeah. People are adapting and making the best of what they have. So it, it's 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 working, but we can't afford to lose anybody either. There's no, it's not enough people, right. and it's not going away for a long time. Yeah. You mentioned the electrical. So the yeah, electrical. So what's the expectation if they're working on solar projects and every other? I know, right? So we have Jeff Lang, who owns Kaplan Schmidt, who I've known for 20 years. He's a stand-up guy. We're not going to have a problem here. He's got enough help to do this. I mean, I just asked him to look at a couple of projects we have out to bid now. He turned me down. Mm -hmm. I can't. I, okay. I have this much on my plate. I only have so many electricians to do it. I, I, it's killing me, he said. Um, Livonia is out to bid right now for a new bus yeah, drive. Right. He said, I can't even bid it. That's killing you to pass up new build work because it doesn't happen very often, right? And we have other projects coming out that are new build and we can't do it. At least he knows enough. He, yeah. he says sense enough to sure. say, I got enough, I can't I can't be done more. Thank God. So, yeah. yeah, we'll be all right. Okay. Any other Thank questions you. for here from the board? Good meeting. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having you. Well, 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 you're welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. So, where are we going to go? Oh, the uh, CFO, uh, Mr. Forrest, can you pour it? Uh, oh, my God, we're the, free. The, 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 yeah. Mr. Uh, Bacon sends his best regards. Oh, the way. and how is Mr. Williams? He's doing well. He's doing well. He's doing well. He's a gentleman. He is. He is. Uh, so, I just want to go over quickly. One of the things we talked with at finance tonight was our state aid run. Um, if you're interested, it's a public website. You can go out and find it or shoot an email and I will send it to you. But um, for ease, I just took and put these into this little sheet here, this little uh, a slide. As you may or may not recall, I really only pay attention to two things and would encourage us as a team to only pay attention to a couple of things. And that that's the top line, that foundation aid okay. number. Uh, that foundation aid number is a pretty solid number. A lot of the others are are expense driven aids that don't get finalized until the end of the year. Right. Uh, there are attendance aids that don't get it don't get finalized till the end of the year. So it's just uh, we calculate those out, and we'll continue to do that. But uh, the important one is that foundation aid at six million eight hundred fifty six thousand seventy six dollars. Um, there is the other one that we do pay attention here is our UPK. You'll see that's in at two hundred seventy-six thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars. Um, basically, those are the only two numbers on the slide that I would encourage you to keep track of. Mm -hmm. um, 
So let's talk first UPK. Um, it's at $276,173. The understanding there is that they're, they're in Bay, New York City, saying, hey, we have another 26 slots available for Geneseo at $683, $6,883. So if you can, you can apply for the grant and you can get the uh, community based organization and have all of this come together, we have some more money for you to expand your UPK program. I know Mrs. Miller is applying for for that grant, mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping wow. <laughs> that the everything lines up and we're able to expand that UPK grant and add those additional slots. So more to come on that as we move right. forward and, and know what's going on there. Um, our foundation aid <laughs> again is just over six point eight, almost six point nine million dollars. It represents that number. It's not a typograph player. That is a factual number. It's an increase of one million seventy-seven thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars. Um, it's a big number. Uh, one hundred and six thousand of that has to be set aside for what Eric State's calling uh, high impact tutoring. It's for grades three through eight for ELA and math, and if we're at risk, at risk students that may fall behind and, and, and may not may not stay up to standard. So we think that what we're going to be able to do is you know, some of our AIS providers and things of that nature is where we're going to be able to fund those through that set aside. Um, that's all fluid because until the uh, New York State budget is final, you know, this is just what the governor would like. And so now we're going to force trade for a while and then we're the end of the <laughs> state budget. Um, you know, I, I don't want to sound... Uh, like Mr. Doom and Gloom, I don't want to, you know, scare people or, or or be, you know, anything like that. I would, however, just remind us that, you know, the well is only so deep, and for New York State to continue to give away this much in education aid, at some point that could be difficult for the state to continue to do at, at these levels. Um, They've let the foundation aid formula run. What's driving the primary driver of that million dollar increase in aid is the inflation index being up at 8%. So that inflation index is up. That is what really drives that number. Um, you know, we're we're pretty confident that, that number is pretty solid for very solid for the 23-24 school year. I make absolutely zero bets after that. Because there's there's too many unknowns. Um, as we were talking in finance, you know, if, if New York State suffers a recession, whether and that hits uh, personal income tax and more importantly corporate income tax, because we get a lot of New York State revenue from corporate income tax from New York City, right? That could be very detrimental to education funding, right? Education and Medicaid make up about sixty to sixty-five percent of New York State's budget. Right, so if something has to be cut down the road, that's where it's going to have to come from. So I'm not suggesting that it's going to happen, but you're going to hear me continue to talk about just beware, be mindful of what could happen down the road. Um, I'm not again suggesting that it's going to. I am saying it's a possibility. We've lived this before. We lived it with the gap elimination assessment. We lived it with our former governor that kept threatening 20% cuts in aid. And the only thing that balanced out was federal dollars. So uh, again, I'm not suggesting that this that this is going to be a, a one-time event. I'm just reminding us that we are somewhat beholden to New York State and State. If that were to go south, we have to make some other decisions. Okay. Um, and that's really all we have for tonight. It's just that state aid run. Um, I'll let Mike give the update from finance uh, committee this evening and you have any questions on this evening? Now, uh, rumbles, rumblings this year about expense driven aid? Uh, that was our former governor's, uh, yeah. uh, that was his, his uh, yeah. thing that he carried, and apparently she is not picking that up. Good. Um, I haven't heard anything either. Uh, not, a, not a thing. But um, a lot more reporting. I, I know that there is, oh. they're looking for to continue New York State transparency. They're looking at a reporting on. Uh, the electric bus, how feasible that is. There's reporting on that. Okay. All right. Should be just a lot more financial reporting that they're currently talking about in the budget process. Great. Thank you.
Kind of what's the timeline for that grant to be completed? Oh, Miller. Twenty third. I think it's this month. I think it's this month. Yes, month. it is. Thank you. You think it's the 23rd. We definitely know it's this month. <laughs> okay. I'll go to the 28th. We'll okay. That's right. Come on. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. As John is, is pulling up my PowerPoint, I just wanted to, Casey mentioned, our conference day last Monday. And I just really want to publicly thank um, Mrs. Miller and Mr. Van Epps. They planned and initiated and facilitated the curriculum portion of the morning. And it was the first time in I don't know how long, and you know, John and Craig, we'd have to think about the last time we really did a K-12 initiative regarding curriculum instruction. Um, it's been a very, very long time. It was very well received. Uh, very well done and just great to be back talking about teaching and learning and, and, what, and to do what's best for our kids. So thank you both for the work with that, um, but also the, the entire staff. It, it was it was great. There was some, I, I, I included it in my weekly update, you know, the head, shoulder, knees, toes, go. 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 Saw the picture. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone participated, so. Uh -huh. It, it was good. Um, along the lines of accomplishments, um, Mr. Dwyer shared that at SUNY Geneseo, the sports teams, the athletes, much like some of our high school students do, they recognize someone in their um, career that has made a difference. And one of Christy Hague's student teachers acknowledged her as someone who has made a difference in her elementary educational experience. And you know, we know our teachers touch our students' lives each and every day, but to have a, a, a future teacher reach out and say, this is someone who's inspired me and I learned a lot from, really, really says a lot. So certainly congratulate to Christy um, on that acknowledgement. Um, so we did talk about the gym floor. I, I thought it'd be best to try and give you as much of a visual um, to see what we're working with. So you can see that how, how wide a strip we had to um, cut into the floor to actually get to some, some dry flooring. Again, we're still waiting on um, Utica, the insurance adjuster, to get back to us in regards to a timeline. And at this point, looking at different options on replacing the floor. Um, certainly, probably a third to two thirds of that floor is going to need to be replaced. Do we put another wood floor? back in and, and piece it to what is, is left. Do we put in a synthetic rubber floor, knowing that in a couple of years, we're gonna be looking at uh, a pretty significant gym remodel. So still working out some of those details and really relying on Western New York Flooring Company to help us drive those decisions. They're, they're professionals. There's two, two main companies that put floors in, in gyms, DeClerc, uh, who was unable to, to do our work and Western New York Flooring. So we're really relying heavily on our experts to, to advise us and move us forward. And unfortunately, we're obviously not playing on, on this floor. So our home games have been rescheduled all over the place. Um, I think last Friday we were in, or last Thursday we were in Letchworth. We've been at Avon, we've been at Pavilion. So um, we've been at SUNY Geneseo. So thankfully uh, our neighboring school districts and in SUNY Geneseo have been trying to help us as much as possible. But, Certainly unfortunate for our senior athletes who are unable to um, play some of their senior nights in our gym. And again, a huge inconvenience for physical education classes. They are holding classes on the other side, so in the other half of the gym. It just, it's inconvenient at best for, for our physical education staff. Is it all the way down? The water went all the way down? It went as far as where we cut into the floor, yes. Um, yeah, not good. And then you do know that we are renovating the bathrooms across from the choral room. They're across from the auditorium. We're making them into three um, individual units. And as they were demoing walls, we again discovered that we have more black walls that are in the same condition as were the gym. So um, Again, an unfound expense as far as what was in our original plan, but it, this black wall will need to be taken down and a new wall 
new fire rated well would need to be replaced. So not included in the plans was you know, no one would anticipate finding walls like that. I did circle that one uh, cinder block on top. It just we, we jokingly said don't slam the bathroom door when yeah. you walk in there because of, of how tediously it is just mm -hmm. hanging there. So mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. there's there's that update. Um as Gary mentioned, we do have our auditorium, portal, and band room renovation renovation coming up. The work will start at the end of June. <laughs> the one piece that we are worried about is there's dimmer lights for the auditorium. They have a 50-week lag time on ordering. So we will be able to have the lights installed in the sound system, but just those dimmer lights on part of the board um, will be light. So hopefully that will change. And if you do hear the um, construction of the bathroom, the APC is actually moving in those two classrooms right behind. So just to prove that they are working, working hard. Um, this is the picture of our roof. So if you see that the concrete picture in the middle, that is actually the top of the new gym steam edition. So they just wanted to show you how they had tied in the existing roof into, um, into that structure and give you an update on that. It looks, I mean, I'm not a roof expert, but it looks but to me, yeah. it's not leading. So there you go. Those are the two things. Right. Um, have to say it. <laughs> right, true. Okay. Uh, true, Kathy, with my luck uh, and what's going on. Very excited to update you about the strategic plan. We did, the committee did meet on February 1st. We reviewed the draft goals, objectives, and action steps. Very positive feedback uh, from that committee meeting. And on February 3rd, last Friday, we did post the draft goals, action steps, and objectives on the website. We created a thought exchange survey because we're really trying to get as much feedback from the community, faculty and staff in regards to our plan. We really want to make this a living document that is meaningful and, and really has um, the ability to take Geneseo to, to that next level. Um, on February 16th, I will be offering an opportunity for faculty and staff to come and share feedback in person. So um, giving them that opportunity as well. And the survey will close on February 20th, and we'll bring the plan forward to be approved on March 22nd. And just to review, um, I won't read the goals, but really looking at four main areas when we look at our goals. Um, transitioning and our curriculum and instruction is incorporated in goal one. When we look at the second goal, it's really about the social emotional support for our students. And our third goal was about communication, both internally and externally for our district, really making sure we improve that to make sure that we are um, fostering a welcoming and inclusive environment. And then fourth but not fifth is to make sure that we have our, our financial um, the facility support necessary to meet to meet these goals that we've outlined in those other two goals. So uh, it's taken a little bit longer than we originally had anticipated, but I feel very proud of the document that that we have created. It is um, it, it's something that I know the admin team is behind, and we're looking forward to to digging in. We're we're done talking about it. Let's let's get to work. That's where we are with it. So happy about our progress with the strategic plan. One of the things that um, Casey had mentioned to me one day was just the number of new entrants um, that he has seen in the elementary. And so I thought it would be nice to update you on our enrollment status. So you can see um, at elementary, middle school, high school students, at the elementary level, we had 42 students enrolled. We had 19 student withdrawals. We have an overall of 23 additional students in the elementary school. Middle school, high school had 30 students enrolled, 35 um, withdrew. So we're, you know, we're down five in the middle school, high school. But, you know, since the pandemic, we are seeing more transient populations of, of students moving in and out. So, but I thought it was just interesting when, when he mentioned to them, like, I should really look at the, the numbers and see where, yeah. where we are. And so certainly growing at the elementary level. Distance Labor Day? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then just always our upcoming events. We have our fourth grade band concert. It's always neat to go to see the that concert. It's their first opportunity on the stage. And then to see them years later in the high school band is it's neat to see that growth. We do have a high school orientation for eighth grade, February 16th. 100th day of school on February 13th. That's always an exciting day for, for us. 
And then there is the fourth week of Band Solo Festival, February 17th. And the week of the 20th to 24th is our recess. Any questions? Great. Questions for the superintendent? Is there a good participation for the strategic planning committee? Like, how many makes up that? The committee? It's in the weekly update. 12 people were on the committee. That are regularly attending? So there was, yes, so one did withdraw, and then um, it really broke off and we went from the SPC committee, then we went to the focus groups. So that was over the summer, we, we invited everyone. We invited faculty members, we invited community members to come in and really work on breaking down those goals and getting into the focus areas and objectives and action steps. And each one of those groups, there were four different groups for the four different goals. Um, they vary from like seven to 10 people. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, community relations. I think Dave was in Yeah. So, we'll go right to the committee report. Audit finance. So, yeah, we met tonight. So Ken has certainly reviewed the state aid runs. You don't need to add anything there. The only thing I would add to what Ken has discussed is that. Uh, we, we, as we get more granular in the budget, we started looking at some of the energy costs and where we are relative to the increases. They were expecting both in fuel as well as electric. So some dialogue continues there and we can see where that leads. And um, we also talked a bit about the, uh, the, tra the transportation costs as it pertains to primarily the special education, the increases there. That, that, uh, and then uh, lastly, we had a bit of a discussion on it's early yet. We don't know exactly where we might be on the, uh, the tax gap. As that uh, unfolds, we'll certainly talk to the full board. In this one? No? Yeah. Great. Questions for the committee? Thank you. Um, I'll see the that meet. Um, <laughs> GCEF, I think we meet tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep, there's a meeting tomorrow. You're, you're Zooming with them and then Zooming with the school boards. The school boards. <laughs> so, yeah, really, the, the main focus for GCEF is um, with no gym and not having a timeline on when we would um, have those repairs. Are we postponing the hard possible one more time? So oh, that's right. Unfortunate. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get some information, but I, I it would be doubtful to have it fixed by March. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Right. Personnel. Okay. Under right. personnel, <clears throat> I'd like to entertain a consent motion for items eight point zero two to eight point one seven. Second. Uh, questions on any of those. Coaches, Very good. Yep. Okay. All in favor of that motion, say aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Under new business, we'd like to entertain a set of motion for items 9.02 and 9.03. Questions <laughs> on those? You might want to comment on that. After the man, I want to save us some money. Yeah, so um, anytime that we have to add an additional run for uh, any specific reason, we do allow parents to sign a contract where they would provide transportation and then we would pay them mileage for, for the time that they're transporting their child. Um, this has helped us in a couple of different situations in the past. In the past, it's helped um, on a special education run. Um, sometimes it's helped us in situations where 
my student falls under the Invento Act. So this is um, you know, certainly a time that it, it helps us with the driver shortage and where we are with all the different runs, it's certainly helpful. Everybody good? Uh, all in favor of that motion, say aye. All right. Aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous again. Business office. The business office will entertain a motion for items 10.02 to 10.05. So, questions on any of those items? <laughs> the kids good? Okay. All right. All in favor of that motion, say aye. All right. Aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous again. Thank you. Um, that brings us to discussion items. Cancellation of the uh, December 27th board meeting. Uh, would anybody be disappointed if we didn't have that meeting? <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to be in, in Philadelphia, and the, the superintendent's going to be farther south than that. So we, we think we can get by without that, that second meeting in, in February. Everybody's good with that. Now, the next meeting would ordinarily be March 6th, but the superintendent's going to be in Albany at the winter meeting of the superintendents. So I wonder if it's okay if we go to the 13th. The 13th is a regular scheduled meeting. We took, oh, that, into, oh. we took that into account. We knew that. So we did schedule Problem solved. the March meeting on March 13th. Um, so we we'll meet, meet again on the 20th, the last Monday of March. We will, wouldn't we? There's still, 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 still two meetings in March. Still two meetings in March. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, ready for executive oh, session. Right. I'd like to entertain a motion to enter executive session for one safety matter, personnel matters, contract negotiations, and superintendent mid year review. Second. All in favor? Peter. <laughs> Everybody in favor of that? Okay. This is really kicking us out in the morning.